In this week's image breakdown, we're going to look at an image that I've loosely titled The Prey. Shot in Iceland several years ago, it was part of a series of fashion shoots that we filmed and documented for a photography project called Fashionscape. Iceland, of course, has now become a hugely popular location for landscape and fashion projects. But at the time, we were the first people to undertake a fashion project like this in Iceland. This particular shot was shot in the vast volcanic highlands in the central Black Desert area, a location where many sci-fi films have been shot. And that was partly my inspiration for this particular shot. One of the other inspirations for this image came from my childhood and films like One Million Years BC and those classic Raquel Welsh posters and images from the movie. The dress was designed by a very talented designer named Ruth Tarvidas, who unfortunately has since passed away. Ruth was very excited by the project and arranged several dresses for us to use on location. This one was one of my favourites, as I knew its shimmering fabric and intense colour would be perfect for this shot. The model was the fantastic Santa Ozina, who worked so hard with us for seven days, enduring freezing cold conditions, and was as enthusiastic for creating great images as the rest of the team. Hair and makeup were by Lena Norgan. The project was a huge undertaking and it involved a large amount of logistics and planning as well as a fantastic team effort over eight days, working about 15 hours a day in June when the sky never actually went dark. So let's talk you through the image and how I shot it. So let's start with the overall impression of the image. First of all, you may have noticed that the image has a sort of dark tonality across the image. And that's because I deliberately underexposed the scene. And this is a common technique that I apply in my fashion images. So what you're seeing in terms of the ambient scene, that is the sky and the, the land area, the general daylight scene, that ambient scene is underexposed deliberately by about one stop, maybe a little bit more. Now, the reason that I employ this technique and have done for many years is so that I can then intentionally add flash lighting, studio lighting on location onto my subject, being the model, at the correct exposure. And then that uh, disparity between the darker background and the correct exposure on the model makes the model or the fashion pop out of the image more strongly. To achieve the balance in the image, the top half of the shot, the sky, uh, utilized a graduated filter over the lens. That brought the exposure of the sky down by about three stops in exposure so that it would more closely match the foreground land area. Because of course the land area in this shot is dark volcanic ash and uh, volcanic uh, material. So it was a very black landscape or a very dark gray landscape and uh, it's made to go to even darker with the underexposed ambient scene, but the sky would have remained too bright. So the graduated filter helped achieve that balance between sky and land. Additionally, the model was running from left to right in the scene. And then as she got to a particular designated point, uh, she was turning back to look as if she was being chased by something. The something, as you can see in the image, are the alien War of the Worlds style tripods that I've included in post-production, but we'll come to that shortly. The camera's position was from very low down, allowing me to look up at my model and really uh, get that imposing feeling on the model uh, by shooting from a lower angle. And I deliberately found a location where I had some rock interest here in the foreground, as you can see, and then some layering of rocks going off into the distance including this rather nice structured uh, rock on the left-hand side. 
as I mentioned earlier, the inspiration for this particular image was from sort of sci-fi films or uh, various uh, images that I've had in my mind in the past. And this particular landscape suited absolutely perfectly because it is very much an alien, empty landscape devoid of all life. And then by putting this brightly colored dress and model in this scene was a great juxtaposition for impact. The lighting in the shot uh, was relatively straightforward in terms of the uh, lighting directions and angles. There wasn't anything too tricky there, although the lights themselves were a little bit more difficult to handle on location. On the left hand side, um, coming in uh, right from here, you can see the beam of light, but I will just illustrate it as well. You can see the beam of light coming in across the floor from this direction. And that beam of light was coming from a large parabolic reflector, the Para-222. And the beauty of using that particular modifier is that it can throw light quite a long distance, which means I could keep it well out of my shot and allow it to look like a beam of light on the floor. And that was deliberate because I wanted it to look like that beam of light was somehow searching for our prey or searching for our person in the shot. And that correlates and corresponds to the same beams of light that I put in post-production emanating from our alien tripods in the background. So the overall uh, feeling and mood of the image, the uh, brilliant expression from Santa uh, with the fear and the running uh, encapsulates that whole feeling of being hunted or being chased down and then further uh, exaggerated with the beam of light uh, grazing across the landscape here on the left side and leading you up towards the model. Now that beam of light illuminates all of the side of our model, as you can see down here, down the side of the head, down the side of the body. And then because of the lovely shimmering texture and material of the dress, that catches the light from that Para 222 beautifully. There were two further lights in this shot. Those two further lights came from out here over here and over here, where I had two para 88s. Those are smaller paras, uh, and I had those more tightly focused, and I had one directly above the other, and those were bringing in a beam of light coming into here, and another one coming in lower down. And that was creating the light that you're seeing on the side of the hair, down along here, and this side down the side of the dress. Now, if you look at the ratio of the lighting, you can see that my key light is the one on the left. That's the one that's the strongest compared to the lighting coming in on the right. That certainly on the lower part was set to be weaker. So on this particular Para 88 here, I think the setting uh, was a little bit lower, maybe a stop or half a stop lower than the light at the top. The light on the top, as you can see, is a little bit brighter up on this area and also considerably brighter, bringing in this lovely highlight down the side of the hair uh, on this side. Now that was all done, the lighting from that direction, to potentially emulate sunlight breaking through the clouds coming from the opposite direction. So we have the light from our alien tripod chasing from the left hand side causing the beam of light on the landscape and then we have what is potentially sunlight breaking through the clouds uh, and coming in onto the right hand side of the shot uh, onto our model. So that was really it, Those, that was all the lighting there was. Uh, the benefit was that I was using a fast flash duration which would freeze our model as she was uh, running through the landscape and freeze all the uh, motion. And that fast flash duration uh, really helped uh, by freezing the motion of the dress and freezing the motion of the model and the model's hair as she was turning into the shot. Now, one of the other things that I was very happy with with um, Santa Rosina was her acting performance. And this is one of the great things that you get from a good model is their ability to 
act and to absorb themselves in the story, the narrative, and take part within the scene. And Santa did a fantastic job on that throughout this project um, when I basically indicated to her the style of the shot that I wanted and the mood of the shot. She took on that persona and took on that character and uh, played the part really, really well. As you can see, she's done wonderfully in this particular image. So for me, the overall scene worked absolutely perfectly for what I wanted to achieve. I couldn't have asked for a better sky and a more ominous feel with those layers of cloud leading us off into the distance. A clear sky wouldn't have been suitable for this particular shot. It had to have this sort of ominous presence about it. And I was very, very happy with uh, the weather that we had for this on the day. Now, to enhance the rest of my image and to bring it to life, uh, the small elements of post-production was simply getting these 3D models of these alien tripods and adding those, comping those into the scene, one on the left and one on the right. And in bringing those uh, alien tripods into the scene, I then simply uh, added some curves, adjustment layers to create what looks like a beam of light emanating from the search light from the tripod on the left and also another emanating from the tripod on the right. And then again, that all ties in uh, very nicely for me with the beam of light coming in and grazing across the floor. Further enhancements in post-production would have been just a little bit of burning and dodging on key areas of the rock. So I would have lifted up maybe the edge of that rock a little bit in here, dodged that one up a tiny bit, possibly lifted a couple of bits and pieces there just to sculpt a few areas a little bit more. But I was exceptionally happy with the final result. And like much of my work, post-production is kept to a minimal, just burn and dodge work and usually a little bit of contrast uh, changes as well. Well, I hope that you found that image breakdown useful. If you'd like to watch the complete shoot and the others from that trip and what goes into uh, a project like Fashionscape, then you can find the whole documentary of that project on Carl Taylor Education. Thanks very much for watching.